Hey guys, Levi here talking about the new title from Matthews. I'm sure at this point you guys have all heard about it. If you follow Matthews or follow the competition world at all, it was giant news um, towards the end of last competition season. First, I'm going to go over a little bit of specs on this bow. Um, then we'll go over my thoughts and um, experience with, with the bow. Um, this is the title 38. It comes in a 36. Um, it looks way longer than it is because the riser is really, really long and it has really short limbs. Um, one of the things I do love about this bow is it's not parallel limb. Um, and sh for shooting tournaments, I would way rather have a non-parallel limb bow. I feel like um, under that kind of pressure, <clears throat> when you have to be that precise, I need something pulling against me a little bit. And those parallel limb to pass parallel limb bows, um, a lot of times are so dead in the hands, so easy to shoot that you don't get feedback um, and you don't get a feel. It's, it's a feel thing for a competition guy. A lot of you might not understand what I'm talking about, but I really like that it doesn't have parallel limb uh, technology in it. Um, they are short and they are really, really wide. You can see how wide um, this limb platform is. The first thing I noticed, and I'm not going to get into my experience with it too much yet, but the first thing I noticed was major stability in this platform. And I think it has a lot to do and mostly to do with the width um, of the limb, the limb pocket, all of that. Um, so it's a seven inch brace. Um, this was 38 inches axle axle. This color is mint. It's my favorite, very unique. Um, one of the, the big things with this bow is it has the bridge lock technology in the stabilizer system. One of my favorite things about it um, is the, the tunability of it, um, being able to slide this. So before you get a screw in stabilizer, you're stuck. If you order a 30, you got a 30 forever. Um, this one, you can order a 30, have a 26, have a 23, um, have a 23 and a half, uh, 28 and a half. You can really micro tune and clicks just like that. Um, right now I've got it at 30 and we'll leave it right there cause that's what I've been liking it as. But you know, it's got the, the weight systems. I've got a, a 12 on the back, a 30 on the front, uh, I'm running, I think, 15 ounces on the back and maybe five on the front right now. Um, it also has anchor weights. This is an eight ounce weight right here. Um, and it's removable. You can take it on or off. I really like it. I've always liked keeping most of the weight below my hands. Um, I don't like a competition bow that feels like it gets really top heavy. So the more weight I can get below my hands, the more I feel like it stabilizes, levels easier, all of that. This bow is um, built in with match bow strings. It's a new string um, that come on these things. And I'm telling you, they are, they rival the best string makers in the world. Um, have no complaints about the new strings. No twisting, no stretching after the initial break-in. Really, really great strings and cables. Um, bridge lock sight technology. Um, everything that was good in the, in the platforms before, they have added into this. They, they took the technology from their hunting bows, um, like the bridge like technology, now incorporated it into uh, the tournament bow, which I really, really love. Um, I'm not gonna get into a ton more specs. It does have the switch weight technology, so we're still adjusting weight um, and draw length with the mods. Um, so I really like that technology. Um, the same top hat systems. Um, you do have to get a little wider um, to run it on a last chance press because the limbs are so wide, you have to order the wide um, fingers for your press um, or it'll fold up. That's one thing that was maybe a con, if you could call it a, a negative, was I had to switch to um, different fingers on my press, which was, I was, was well worth it because I really love the wider platform. Um, but if you're not careful with the original ones, you can fold that up on yourself pretty easy. All right, let's get into my experience with the bow. So it's a funny story. Last year, Matthews call says, hey, we've got this new platform, which I'd already seen and shot. Didn't know when they were gonna launch it, and they didn't know. Um, I knew I liked it just from the few minutes I shot it at the factory, but they said, hey, we're thinking about giving one to you, giving one to McCarthy, and you guys launching this thing at the ASA Classic which is where the shooter of the year race comes down. It's the, the final biggest event of the ASA year. And then on to the next week at the IBO world. So the two most important events of the year, 
they were wanting us to launch a new platform and we were going to have two weeks behind the bow. Um, so at, if you know anything about competition shooters, you know that once we build confidence in a platform, it, we are very skeptical and it takes us a long time normally to fall in love with a new platform. So <clears throat> I talked to McCarthy on the phone. He said, what do you think? I said, I'm only doing it if you're doing it because I'm not just handing you shooter of the year, <laughs> you know? So we both felt like, hey, let's do it. Um, we trust Matthews, the engineers there, never let us down. So let's do it. Let's see what happens. And it was a big risk for Matthews. If me and McCarthy tank in that shoot, whether it was the bow's fault or not, everything gets turned around on this bow launch. Um, and it could be a really, really terrible launch um, if that fell. So it was a lot of pressure on Matthews, a lot of pressure on me and McCarthy even added on top of the shooter of the year pressure, the shooter of the year race, which was very tight between us, the classic, all that. So, however, the first day with this thing set up, I instantly knew, called McCarthy, and we were like both felt that we had an advantage over the rest of the field because it was that much better than the platform that our competition was shooting. Um, so I just started building confidence after day one. And honestly, I think I had some struggles getting my draw length perfect right out of the gate because it was all prototype stuff. So I had like five days behind this bow before I went to the classic and ended up going into the shoot off three points behind McCarthy, I think something like that. Um, and we were one and two going into the shoot off. I passed him after five targets in the shoot off and then he beat me on the final arrow. So it was a, a true battle and test to how this bow shoots under pressure. Um, after very little time behind it. And in that shoot off was the real test for me where I built so much confidence because when you get out there, the crowd's watching, everything comes down to that. That's when you really find out if your bow shoots under pressure. Um, and I pulled back on that first target and that pin went right to the 12 and just boom, sat there, smoked it, hit four out of five rings. I knew we had, we had just landed on something really special. Then the next week went to IBO Worlds and I won the IBO Worlds by the largest margin anybody's ever won the IBO Worlds um, with. Uh, and with the title, the same bow, ASA speeds. Um, so those last two tournaments were really our test with the title. And I'm telling you, I am so excited about 2024 just because of that. And I've shot it this year a ton, getting ready for the first event and it has picked up right where it left off. If you guys are on the fence about it, I'm telling you, I know it seems like a lot of money, but it is worth it. It is literally the best tournament platform I have ever seen, ever held, and ever shot. And you guys won't regret trying it out.